my name is Chloe and today we will be studying the legend of Herdboy and the Weaving Maid. We will focus on how to condense this story so we are able to retell it during a regular conversation. However, today we will also learn ways in which you can make a conversation more coherent and colloquial or informal and most importantly, how you can tell a story to suit your audience. Let's begin, shall we? In the last class, we heard about the story of romance between herd boy and weaving maid. How they fell in love but were torn apart by the Lord of Heaven. It's a tragic but beautiful story and one that many children will have been introduced to in China and Chinese schools. However, like many of the tales we have spoken about throughout our series, it's not a well-known story outside of China. So why are we learning about it today? Well, the overall aim throughout all of the lessons that you are participating in is to develop your skills in storytelling and English speaking skills so that when the time comes, you will be able to entrance and educate foreign people about Chinese culture and traditions during a conversation. So let's go back to our story. As I've asked you before, what do you think a foreign friend would do if halfway through a conversation you suddenly pulled out your book and started reading the story of Herd Boy to them? <laughs> well, yes, they might think you're a little crazy, but they would also lose interest quite quickly because it's very long and there is a lot of detail in the book. So to be able to bring the tale successfully into a conversation, what do we need to do? Correct. We need to choose the best bits and condense it. I am going to pose some questions to you, which should help to focus your attention on the main parts of the story. In this way, you will have a successful summary, which gives us the whole picture. Take your time to compose this condensed version. It should be around 350 words long. You may use the book to guide you. When you are finished, you can play the video again. Hi, welcome back. How did you do? It's a long story and there are lots of details to try and condense. This is how I summarised it. There was once an orphan boy called Herd Boy, who, at the age of 16, took his ox and started to farm alone behind the western hills. One day, his ox suddenly spoke to him and said that if he went to the river that night, he would see beautiful fairies descend from heaven and play in the water. Herdboy was curious and followed the ox's instructions. And sure enough, that night, he saw the enchanting fairies doff their winged garments and splash about. One fairy, named Weaving Maid, was exceptionally stunning, and Herd Boy was compelled to hide her clothes. However, when the fairy found them to be gone, she burst into tears. Herd Boy rushed to console her, apologising for his trick, and in return for his honesty, the fairy decided to stay with him a little longer. Days turned into months and soon the two were in love. A year after their marriage, the fairy gave birth to two children and their wonderful family was complete. Weaving Maid was the most skilled weaver around and people travelled from afar to buy her cloth. But her absence made the Lord of Heaven so angry that one day without warning he ordered to snatch Weaving Maid and take her back to the sky. Herd boy and the children cried in misery. And seeing this, the old ox shed a horn. This horn quickly turned into a small boat, which Herd boy bravely used to float to the heaven and save his wife. Unfortunately, things didn't go smoothly. 
and the Queen Mother stopped his plans by taking out a hairpin and drawing a line between their boat and herd boys. The line rapidly turned into a raging river called the Milky Way. Left devastated, Weaving Maid and Herd Boy could only glance at each other over the chasm, linked only by their hearts. The Lord of Heaven was moved by this. And so he granted that once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, countless magpies would form a bridge across the Milky Way so that Herd Boy and Weaving Maid could be united for a short time. Today, the double seventh is an emotional festival for Chinese people, where they pray to receive the same steadfast affection from their loved ones as Weaving Maid and Herd Boy. Okay, that was my first draft of the summary, but we know that by now, at nearly 400 words, this is still too long to use in a conversation, right? And yours probably was too. So of course, we need to shorten it. However, today, I would also like you to consider your audience a little more. In other stories, we've considered how to be a little less formal and imagined talking to a very close friend. We've used more colloquial terms and have spoken in a casual manner. Today, your audience will be different. I want you to imagine you are telling this story to a five to six year old child, a brother or sister of your foreign friend. Firstly, we need to consider the words that might be too complicated or complex for a preschool child. I would like you to quickly recap my summary and choose five to ten words which you think will be too difficult for a five to six year old to understand. Once you have done that, press play. Two minutes, go. Okay, here's some vocabulary that I think will be too difficult for the children to understand. So, what do we need to do instead? Yes, we need to find synonyms for these words. Do you know what synonyms are? They are groups of words which are different but have the same or similar meanings. For example, huge, gigantic and massive are synonyms for the word enormous. Sometimes for children, we might not just use one word, but a phrase. For example, a student could be explained as a little boy or girl who goes to school. So we need to find synonyms or easier phrases for these difficult words before creating a summary. Very quickly, use your phone or a dictionary to find synonyms or less difficult vocabulary for the complex words that you've chosen. You have just five minutes. Quick, go! Okay, here are some examples. So, there are your ideas for synonyms for a five to six year old. This is your task. It isn't easy. Create a summary of the herd boy story, which can be told to a five to six year old child. Take as long as you need. It doesn't matter so much about the word count because we see that sometimes we have to use more words to break down the difficult vocabulary. All that matters is that you can remember how to say it. What matters most is the vocabulary you use. It can't be too difficult and the story should flow coherently. 
I would really like to see your answers, so please do create a document that you can send to me. Once you are ready, you can press play again. Has the challenge been accepted? OK, let's go. Right, let's see what you have. Great try. This is my version. Once upon a time, there was a little boy called Herd Boy who had no mummy or daddy. He was 16 years old and his only friend was an ox who could talk. One day, he told Herd Boy to go and watch some magic fairies play in the river at night. Herd Boy was excited to see the fairies and when he saw them, he fell in love right away with a beautiful one called Weaving Maid, who was the most clever cloth maker in all the land. He hid her clothes as a joke, but she became very upset and Herd Boy was very sorry. Weaving Maid said it was okay and wanted to stay with him for a few days. Soon, they fell in love and they had two babies. They were a very happy family. The God of Heaven was angry that Weaving Maid didn't return to the sky and he took her away one day. Herd Boy was so sad that he cried and the ox's horn fell off and this horn turned into a boat. The Herd Boy used the boat to sail to the sky and save Weaving Maid. But the Queen Mother stopped him by making a raging river. This river was called the Milky Way. Herd Boy and Weaving Maid could only look at each other across the river. But their love was still strong. The God of Heaven felt bad, so he let them have one day each year to see each other again. This was the seventh day of the seventh month. Now in China, Everybody thinks of this story on the 7th of July. Everybody dreams that they will have the same type of strong love that the herd boy and weaving maid had when they too get married one day. Okay, so there you have it. This story I think would be very suitable for a child. I believe yours will be similar. So now to use this in a conversation. I'm going to become a six-year-old. I know, <laughs> it's hard to imagine, but please try. We have met many times because you know my older brother. We have lived in China for three years. You have come to my house and you and my older brother are looking after me whilst mum and dad have gone out for dinner. You're trying to get me to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to show you some questions that I might ask as a six-year-old. You need to be ready to answer them in our conversation. Once you are ready, press the play button again. Take your time to answer these in detail. Go! Okay, I hope that wasn't too difficult. Are you ready for this? We are now going to have a virtual conversation. I'm a six year old who won't go to sleep. Be sure to remember this. I'm going to ask you some questions and you can answer however you like, but when you see the white background with the question, you should pause the video to give yourself enough time to answer in detail. You can try this conversation a few times and when you're confident, why not video it and send it to us? Okay, let's go. I'm not very tired. Do I have to go to sleep right now? Have you ever needed to sleep, but you couldn't? Why couldn't you sleep? What kind of things should I do to make me sleepy? But I want to talk to you some more because you're the first Chinese friend that I've ever had. I have a question. Have you ever been sleepy but you had to stay awake? Why did you need to stay awake? 
Sometimes I need to stay awake when my brother's friends come over, but he says I should sleep. But he's wrong. How did you stay awake? What did you do? Great tips. I'll try them soon. <laughs> I like to talk when I have to stay awake. Okay, I have one more question. Which sky do you like better? The daytime sky or the nighttime sky? Why? I really like the nighttime sky. I think the stars and the moon are very pretty. I know what might help me sleep. Do you know any stories about the sky? Please could you tell me one? Oh, wow, thank you. That was such a good story. I'm so sleepy now, so I might have to say goodbye. But before I do, don't forget to send your videos and documents to this address. Bye-bye. See you soon. <sighs>